remember when I was in school for, for dietetics, I remember sitting there in the class when they told us about celiac disease. And way back when, which wasn't so long ago, they were saying that celiac disease was this disease you got when you were really little and there was you know, diarrhea and distension and all those different things and you, you couldn't eat wheat. And I sat there eating a bagel thinking how miserable that would be and how glad I was that I did, never would have had to deal with anything like that. So fast forward, here I am. So what we're going to be talking about today is a gluten-free diet because we've heard a lot about how a gluten-free diet is the only treatment at this point for celiac disease. So we're going to be talking about how strict you need to be, which foods are naturally gluten-free. Um, we're going to be talking about label reading and we're going to go through a few examples. We're going to be talking about cross-contamination and those little made in a factory statements. Um, gluten is a storage protein found in wheat, barley, rye, and by cross-contamination in most commercial oats. And it's off limits for anyone with celiac disease. So we talk about the need to be strictly gluten-free, a uh, strict gluten-free diet, and the amount of gluten that can hurt you may actually really surprise you. It's a teeny tiny itty bitty amount. So to give you an example, we have a picture of a slice of bread and have divided that little piece of bread into 7,030 pieces. And 7,000, 1 7,030th of that piece of bread is actually equal to 20 parts per million of gluten. And the idea with some researchers is 20 parts per million is the maximum safe amount. So it's a teeny tiny crumb. Now there are some other researchers that suggest maybe more like 5 parts per million is a safer amount. And that part was so small that I couldn't actually fit the pen so you couldn't actually see. So just to give you an example, it's, it's a really minuscule amount in all intents and purposes, it, it's nothing. So it's not like, hey, I'm gonna grab my friend's cookie and have a bite. It's not, okay, I'll have a slice of pizza and just wipe off the cheese. It's not eating around croutons. It's being as strict as you possibly can because even those little crumbs here and there are enough to, to cause illness, to make people sick. So I like to start off with the good news. There are lots of naturally gluten-free foods. Um, the best part of it is they're usually cheaper, they're healthier, they're pretty much in any grocery store across the country, no specialty gluten-free section needed. And these are things like plain fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, lentils. It's, it's things like meat, poultry, fish, eggs, so most dairy like milk, um, almost all cheeses, yogurts, and single ingredient foods like sugar or honey or you know, basil or, or other things along those lines, or rice or wild rice, are naturally gluten-free. And the reason I said plain is because you can have chicken, which is naturally gluten-free, and as soon as you put soy sauce on it, which has wheat in it in many cases, it's not gluten-free anymore. So it's not just whether or not a food is gluten-free, it's how it's prepared and what it's served with that often makes the difference of whether or not it's okay for someone with celiac disease or whether it's not. So the more obvious sources of gluten include the usual suspects, so pretty much anything you're going to find in a bakery. So cakes, cookies, crackers, scones, biscotti, you name it, those things contain gluten. Um, there are also the things like the pizza, the pasta, and sometimes things that are a little bit less obvious, like some people will say, well, can't you have pumpernickel bread or pita bread or corn bread or potato bread or egg noodles, um, but actually those things are, are largely wheat-based and the regular versions of those are out for anyone with celiac disease. So what's in a name? Gluten by any other name is pretty much going to get you just about as sick. There are many other names for wheat. Um, the most common ones that we see that are included in foods are things like spelt and camut, which are both ancient forms of wheat. Those won't work for anyone with celiac disease. There are also other names that um, wheat goes by, like bulgur or couscous or um, matzah, um, and names that you often hear in other countries, like farina or semolina or farro. Those names all mean wheat, and all of, all of those products are not okay for someone with celiac disease. So in addition to the blatant sources of wheat in foods, there are also trace amounts of wheat, barley, rye, and oats in products. While you always need to le read ingredients for all products, there are some products that you need to look extra, extra carefully that often contain hidden sources of gluten. And these are things like soy sauce or teriyaki sauce or different marinades. Um, these are things like lipsticks or communion wafers. Um, 
even things like Play-Doh that we may never even really think about as food, but still sometimes, especially if you're very young, go in your mouth, those things often contain gluten as well. So many people are surprised to realize that there's actually no law in the United States defining what gluten-free is. Yes, there are products that are labeled gluten-free, but legally, essentially at this point, those labels need to be truthful and not misleading. So you can't slap a label on wheat thins say, and say gluten-free, but we don't have a sense of how much cross-contamination those products have. It's not mandated by law. So the FDA had a ruling that was due out in August of 2008, obviously. <laughs> it's 2010. It's not here yet. Um, so we're not quite sure when that's going to be out or, or exactly the details of it. They've started looking at it. But even when that comes out, it's a voluntary law. So if a company decides to say gluten-free, it'll have a specific meaning attached to it. But every product you pick up at the grocery store isn't going to be labeled. So what we do have at this point um, is allergy labeling law. And so there was a law passed, and this was in 2004, and what that said was that the top eight allergens needed to be labeled. Now, gluten isn't an allergen, but wheat is. And this helps us in a lot of different ways because wheat is really common in foods. And so there are a couple of things that you need to know about this law. First, the law went into effect in 2006. So if you have one of those pantries that look like it could survive a nuclear holocaust and you, know, you could get through for 10 years and you have really old stuff, they may be before the, the labeling laws went into effect. And so to really be careful, doubly, triply careful, knowing that the labels won't be done the same way. Um, the other thing about it is, you know, it's wheat, but there's also wheat, barley, rye, and oats in most cases. It's also a food law, so medications, not covered. Um, and other things that aren't technically food, like cough drops, but still things that go in your body, are not necessarily covered. It's also an FDA law. So there are foods, there are things we eat that aren't covered by the FDA, like alcohol, like meat, like poultry, and like eggs that aren't covered under this law. So um, supplements and um, imports are supposed to be covered under this law, but if you, if you check out a, a local import store or um, Latino market or something along those lines, often you'll find that things aren't labeled um, in the way that's declared by the FDA. So the reason why this law is so helpful is there are lots of ingredients that can be from wheat but usually aren't, and now at least for wheat we know for sure. And these are things like food starch or modified food starch or maltodextrin or um, MSG, or monosodium glutamate. And the nice thing is with this law, if, say, food starch is from wheat, it'll have to say food starch, and then in parentheses, wheat, or a statement at the bottom saying contains wheat. So it doesn't have to be both, but one or the other now needs to be there, which is a huge help. So that's wheat. That's the deal with wheat. But there's also barley. Um, and so barley, to many people's disappointment, is, a, is what beer is made of. So that's off, off you know, as a starter, anything made with beer or, or regular beer is going to be out. There's also malt, malt flavoring, and bre brewer's yeast. So barley doesn't need to be clearly labeled since it can be hidden under things. It's rare, but it's occasionally found under natural flavor or under smoke flavor. And the things that often have it are things like uh, maple extract or flavored vinegars or miso or even tea. Um, one of the most disappointing ones is chocolate <laughs> often contains barley. Um, and soups and broths 